Welcome back to another edition of Jen Sports Corner back at you for August 15th, 2023. I'm your host, Jen, my co-host. My name's Ryan from uh, Ryan Sportscast. Absolutely, man. You know what time it is. Eagles football is yeah. upon us. Hell, we just had the preseason game this past week. Uh, liked what I saw. Uh, we have in the joint practices with the Browns this week as well, so a lot to talk about there. And then we're going to go ahead and get into the Phillies and see how they're doing down this stretch run as they prepare to try to get a wild card spot or hold on to that wild card spot for the playoffs. So let's go ahead and uh, before we get into it, like, subscribe, share the video, make sure you spread the word and whatnot because we out here doing it. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the Eagles and some of the the things that we saw from the first game of preseason. So let's just talk about the man, the myth, the legend already who stood stood out in that first game, Mr. Jalen Carter. And he he was all over the field in the limited time that he was on there. First play of the game, completely just blows past the guard and gets right in, into the uh, the quarterback's face and forces an errant throw. What, what did you think about some of the things you saw out of Jalen Carter last week? Um, just just seeing the way he jumps off the ball, man, like how fast he is. Just the way like you saw him shed that first block, man, it's just like – you know, you're just getting your first preseason action. You're already there making noise. Like, that just shows you, like, in itself what this dude's going to be like. Like, I don't even have to guess or even think this dude's going to be defensive rookie of the year, man. Like, there's wow. not a single doubt in my mind. That's how confident I am. Yeah, I'm overall just excited, man. But his his first preseason action, he showed a lot. So, uh, I'm I'm really – I'm hyped. Yeah, I mean, he looked really, really good. It, it seemed like he was back at Georgia for a hot second. I mean, because he just beat that guy. And not even just that, that he beat him, but the timing. A split yeah. second, a little bit of the pass rush gets up field, and then boom, he's off him. And he's right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his movement is just so fluid. It's almost like you would think he's a five-year veteran. Now, was like, 17, was that Josh Jackson that was playing for the 49ers last year in the playoff game as the backup? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was him. Yeah, he's going to get used to running from Eagles defensive line, and, man, it been in his face. <laughs> his yeah, he, he better be ready. He better have his skates on because he'll be skating a lot. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, he's not going to be starting, but, I mean, he is almost like yeah. flashbacks of that pass rush from the 49ers championship game against the Eagles. Oh, it had him thinking. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you got him so quick. I don't care how fast you are. And obviously, has not going to play out that way every time. But no. even a guy like Lamar Jackson, when you have a guy get penetration into the, the the backfield and collapse the pocket that quick, you don't even have time to accelerate to get out the pocket. You're going to have – you'll break away a couple of times, but you're going to give up a lot of sacks if you're allowing guys to go through your offensive line like a sieve like that. Yeah, it, it made me feel more comfortable knowing we lost uh, Javon Hargrave because mm -hmm. losing him, it's like, you know, it was such a big deal. And when you see that type of positive energy right out the gate for the way he shed that block, it's like, okay, this is great. Like, is our pass for us going to be better than it was last year? Highly doubted. 79 sacks? I don't know. But it made you, I'm sure it made you feel like, wow, like this dude's going to be the real deal. Not like we didn't know already, but just seeing that, it just makes you feel good. For sure. I didn't need to see it. I've been raving about him since they drafted. Hell, I've been, I made it. I think I made a video about Jalen Carter. Actually, I mentioned Jalen Carter in last year's draft. I had Maybe. him, Jordan Davis, on my guys to get list along with the Kobe Dean. And there was another linebacker I can't remember right now from that draft. There were must get guys, and one of them was Jordan Davis, but another one that I mentioned was Jalen Carter, and I could see it <laughs> even then. So I'm I'm not surprised. And when he, he fell to them at number eight, complete still eight nine whatever you you know y'all y'all on the, the other side of the screen get the point. The fact that you fell that far, and you're able to get a guy with that type of talent, look, he could he could implode and completely blow up his career like many had before him, or he could go the exact opposite. And we heard these character concerns free draft wise when it came to Warren Sapp, Hall of Famer, Randy Moss, Hall of Famer, Lawrence Taylor, Hall of Famer, 
you're talking about serious character concerns. I would say even beyond what we we think that we we were seeing with Jalen Carter. Yeah. Do you think that the Saints regret not taking Lawrence Terrell and taking the running back that they did? I don't remember his name. He was a pretty good running back at number one mm-hmm. overall, but yeah. not nearly impactful to the level that Lawrence Taylor was. No, he's probably one of the best defensive players of all time, truthfully. Exactly, exactly. So when you see talent there, people choose and whiff in the top 10 all the time. At least go with the known commodity, and if he implodes, then so be it. But like, you just don't pass up that type of talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't – I'll be honest, I didn't know much about him. Like, I kept on hearing about the character concerns. And then, as I told you, my boy was telling me, oh, he's, I don't know, I think he's kind of overrated and all this nonsense. Everyone was saying, like, making it sound like, oh, he's crazy. And that's when I put on his tape and I and I watched it. I'm like, I'm like, bro, how could he think this guy's going to be a bust? The way he jumps off the ball, just, like, the way he moves so fluid. Like, how do you, like... I knew immediately the minute I watched his tape, this dude was going to be the real deal. And I, it's crazy to me. Yeah. So I wasn't really that concerned about losing Hargraves, especially considering the amount of money that he was going to get paid on the open market, because you lose that production. I get it. You had 10 plus sacks last year, but oh, you sure. Buku money from the Seahawks. I believe that's where he went. Maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I, if I, heard. but uh, if you say, where you go? Hargrave wants to the Niners. The Niners, okay. So he got a lot of money to go to the Niners. But you're talking about a guy, you put him his film on against NFL players, and then you put Jalen Carter's film on against top teams in the SEC. Now, everybody in the moms knows if you play in the SEC, you are playing against NFL caliber talent, and you're playing with NFL caliber talent. So some would yeah. say you're, you're – some are saying – some would say – your faults get masked by the amount of talent you have around you. But then the flip side of that coin is you're making plays, whether you're getting help or not against the elite of the elite guys that are NFL ready already. And he's, mm-hmm. he, he's not just beating some of these guys at the level he's toying with them. Right. That's so good. to think that he's not going to come up and, and you just look at how strong he is. He broke the damn block and sled in training camp. So to think, look at his film and think that he's not going to come into the league and at least have an impact. Even if you don't think he's going to be otherworldly, to think that he's not going to be able to have an impact is ludicrous. And that's really all you need at that baseline level. And then Mm -hmm. you can take that baseline. And I think he's going to be beyond that. He's going to be a very, very high level player. He's going to be hard to deal with him. Simply the fact that you have all those other people on the line. So he was going to get one-on-ones anyways. And the fact that he's a monster means that those one-on-ones, they're going to be a liability out there trying to block him for 30, 40, 50 snaps, snaps a game. Mm-hmm. He has a good swim move. If if you bite on a swim move, he can bull rush you because he's incredibly strong. And if you, if you are able to deal with the bull rush, then even if you could deal with the speed moves, he's – Super fast. He has good lateral movement. He has happy feet. So he's going to be a handful to deal with, and he's only going to get better. It's just, this is not even his final form, people. No, I don't know. And people get on, you know, Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis, I'm looking for five, four to five sacks out of Jordan Davis for what they're asking him to do. They're not asking yeah. him to be a pass rusher, nor do I think that's his strength. But what he's going to do is he's going to set the pocket. He's going to collapse that pocket and he's going to take away that run. So he's going to force you to be one dimensional and then give him a chance to bull rush with, he's going to eat up two guys. So now you're going to have Jalen Carter, Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat with one-on-ones and one, if not two or all three of those guys are going to win on a consistent basis. It it just gets more tougher. So I think people are, are not taking into account the progression in skill that Jordan Davis is going to have from year one to year two. That's also going to change the dynamics of this run defense and his pass rush ability as a power rusher. And then maybe you have a slight drop off in the short term from Javon Hargraves to Jalen Carter in the pass rush game. But in the run, Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be just as good as, if not better than Javon Hargraves. And he's only going to get better from here. So I, I love where they're at 
there defensively with that line, that front seven, they're going to be ferocious, man. Yeah. And, then, and then you look at, you know, off, off subject, there was a season ending injury to Sean Bradley, unfortunately, and he tore his Achilles. Yeah. Uh, was he going to be a starting linebacker? I don't necessarily – I'm not necessarily sure. Um, He could have been because you're going to have the Kobe at one spot. And then I think it would have been a toss-up between who won the job between him and Miles Jack, but he just bought yeah. it. But yeah. you know, now, now in hindsight, good thing they brought in Miles Jack. Oh yeah. So they they have a guy that can come in that's been a productive starter. They always find these guys that they, they can bring in on one year deals that are either looking to have like a a prove it year or yeah. Years. Wally veterans. I think I think he's a veteran. He's a Wally veteran, but he's also an improved year. I think he has a few more good years left in himself. And right now, I think you're going to get the same type of situation you got with Kaiser White last year. A guy looking to play into a new contract. Oh, absolutely. I love that pickup. They got another linebacker. I can't think of his name, but they they made sure to address that, which was really really good. Oh, uh, Zach Cunningham. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about that pickup. I thought they were both very good pickups because it's a good thing we did, like you said, because with Sean Bradley going, it's like I know he was a good special teamer, but outside of that, like you said, you don't really know if he was going to be a replacement as far as a linebacker, but good thing we got those couple of replacements when we did. <laughs> exactly. Now, secondly, before we go into the joint practices they're having with the Browns this week, let's talk about that one crazy run by DeAndre Swift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did you think about that, man? Uh, I mean, I, I'm not surprised, but at the same time, I'm like, ooh, like he, he, like that move was so nasty. Like just watching it, it's like the way he stepped back and went forward, and it's just crazy move. So you know, I, I think he's gonna be a really great help for this offense and uh for the run game. Yeah, I, I put up a story on Instagram the day after that, and I said, if you give him, I believe I said 12 to 14 carries or something to that nature, he's going to be an all-pro running back this year. Oh, sure. 12, 12 to 14 touches, whether that's um, all rushes or rushes and passes combined. I think he'll be an all-pro. Because he, he won't have to have the, the full workload on his shoulders. So no. you know, the, the nagging injury, especially the soft tissue injuries, that's what's really nagged him his whole career so far. And he's not, he's only like 26 or 27. I mean, he's a young dude. So, and I was looking at Barry Sanders highlights all weekend. It's something about Barry Sanders, Mike Vick, like guys like that, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, where I can just look at their highlights. I look at reaction videos of people reacting to their highlights. I can do that incessantly for weeks on end because it just, no matter how many times you see the play, it never gets old. It's just that outside of the box compared to, some of the other athletes in their respective um, yeah. uh, professions and whatnot. And oh, yeah. the cuts that Barry Sanders was making, uh, it was a game, playoff game in 1993. They were playing the Packers. Now, they lost to the Packers in that game. Um, but Barry Sanders, they weren't sure if he was going to play because I think he had a knee injury. And not mm-hmm. only did he play, but he came out and I think it was the second or third drive. He got a proper handoff ran to the left, stopped on a dime, cut back to the right, and it was just like, yeah, he's he's here. He's not hurt. And that, yeah. it, I got the same feeling out of DeAndre Swift as I got out of looking at some of those Sanders highlights. Now, I'm not comparing him to Barry Sanders. I'm not saying he is, but, like, the cut he made is just – it's so outside the box, and he wasn't hesitant with it. It wasn't like he surprised himself. Nah, he was just like, this is like a normal move for him. So if that's yeah, if that's his big line. He, yeah, with this offense, come on now. Yeah, and then that I mean, you got Kenny Gainwell. I mean, who who do you think starting between those two? I would I'd say Swift, but I I keep on hearing that Kenny is the lead back right now. Yeah, I think it's going to be one A and one B. I think Kenny at one A and then Swift at one B. I yeah. think Swift I like that second and third down, and he can block very well on passing down. So I foresee him being. Uh, the third round back, back, third down back for sure. And then mm-hmm. Kenny will be the first down back. And then I think they'll split carries on second down. And then Rashad Penny, uh, I don't know what their plans are for him. I would have met, I would have, if it was me, 
I would have Rashad Penny as the goal line guy. And then it's the guy that you start giving more carries in the third and fourth quarter where you're trying to really drain clock and uh, give us change of pace and bring some power in there. So um, we'll, we'll see. But yeah. um, they did a hell of a job getting that running back room ready with the moves in the offseason. Swift, you got Gainwell, another year wiser, another year stronger, another year faster. Then you bring in Rashad yeah. Penny for cheap on the penny. All right, so you have all these different tools now. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that that offense. They're only getting better. This team overall, they – they only had a significant move at one spot, in my opinion, and that was at safety with Marcus Epps leaving. But I'm really curious to see what Reed Blankenship looks like because everybody's raving about how he took the next step or whatnot. Now we're going to see. We're going to see in, in game two or three whenever they start these guys and see where he's at, right? But even even with that, like, come on, man, you got Brand, uh Slay and Bradbury on the outside. If you got two lockdown cornerbacks – you you can you got some leeway to be average at safety, and if you're higher than average, then you're really gonna be good. And then you got that pass rush. They they ain't really had they they didn't make any steps backwards. At the very worst, they made a lateral move or two at that position, and at the other positions, they just stayed the same. They're good, man. And then you upgrade, upgraded well, upgraded in my opinion in the run defense with Jalen Carter, and then maybe by mid season you'll start to see him overtake match or overtake the production that you were getting out of Hargraves in the pass rush. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Hassan Reddick actually made a comparison to Hargrave with Jalen Carter saying he has similarities. Like when you watch them on the field, when they was watching him in practice, he said the way he moves is actually kind of similar. And he said, it's crazy to him because, you know, Hargrave has been in the league for a while. So you compare that to, you know, Jalen Carter, it's like, wow, it's like, you know, do we really downgrade that much? No, absolutely not. Jalen yeah. Carter, like you said, he's going to make an immediate impact. And just for that comparison, it's just like, it's crazy to me. Exactly. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and, and, you know, get over to the Phillies. But let, let us know what you think about the Eagles, what they did in game one. And then, you know, oh, before, briefly before we move on, let's talk real briefly about the joint practices. So in day one, they – got blitzed and the Browns were all over them and they came out with a certain energy. We didn't match it. And what I'm reading from this transcript is that, Hey, and I think Slay said it, Sirianni didn't have to tell us nothing. We already knew what happened out there. We knew what we needed to do on day two and they came out and I was listening to the radio today and we were beating their butts up and down the field. And, and, Oh, it's like, you brought that energy. Okay. Bam. Respond back. And Deshaun Watson was running around, missing throws. We were up in his face. Some of their guys were getting mad, thinking that we was uh, getting a little physical with, with Watson. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so so that, so that I don't foresee them, like, putting the starters out there very much in game two because you know how they go, man. He, like, getting the joint practices and treating them like preseason games. So maybe we'll get a drive or two out of Jalen. But, um, yeah, that's what's going on with, with Cam. What you think about that, man? Um, I th I thought um well first day obviously very bumpy the second day I'm glad they responded because uh six or seven sacks I heard which yeah. is very good so you know just glad to see the improvement I'm hearing I also hearing a lot of good thing about Sidney Brown too the uh, the safety we drafted he yeah. had nine tackles his first preseason game and he's just been flat like he's a, apparently he's a tackling machine so uh, I'm really intrigued about that too man. Yo, that, yo, thanks for bringing it up because I, I kept seeing his name. But I, because we talked about him after the draft, I forgot all about him. That, yeah, man, that's we just talking about safeties. Yeah, that's huge, man. So I want to see that he can keep that up. I heard he's been flying around out there, and he that dude ain't missing a tackle, man. He yeah. he's just flying all over the place. So that's very intriguing to hear, you know. And like he's young, just came into the league, so he's only gonna get better here on out, man. You know, I, I like hearing that. Exactly. So let us know what you think about the Eagles, what they did in pre the first preseason game, how they've been responding to the Browns in training camp, you know, they're getting a little chippy. Let us know what you guys think about that. And then let's, let's briefly talk about the Phillies right now. They are sitting here trying to, you know, we, we're trying to keep hold of that last wild card spot. Let's be honest, man, because 
baseball is just a finicky sport. You can be up one day and then you're out of it the, the next, right? So what do you yeah. think about what the Phillies are doing right now? Um, well, the past two games haven't been most pleasant, but uh, but you know they're hanging around. You know, I think they'll, I think they will get the wild card spot. But um, I like what I'm seeing from Turner. He's hitting a lot better. Um, you know, Harper's been getting on base a lot. You know, Swarber has been getting those home runs. You know, if anything, he walks. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they're pl- I mean, they're pl- doing their thing out there. I do like Lorenzo too. What is you know, um. The 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 uh, pitcher I just brought in, but his no hitter, you know, yeah. you know what I'm saying like, it's just, I mean, yeah, there have been some bumps, but the offense has to click. You know, they're they're off one game, they're on the next. Like when they they're winning by big, they get like 13, 14 runs. The next game they lose, so it's like, but I, I think they'll be all right. You know, they're just going through their thing right now. Like you said, it's, it's a long baseball season. One minute they can be on, one minute they can be off. But for the most part, I, I am happy with them. Just uh, kind of need to get out of this little funk right now. Exactly. Um, I, I I agree with everything you just said. So like right now, they're sitting at the top of the wild card standings, two and a half games in front of everybody else, and you have the Giants and then the Marlins in the third wild card spot. So I mean, it pretty much the uh, the NL East is where it's at in the wild card uh, race, and. You know, you look at look at this lineup, man. Like Trey Turner, he's been picking it up ever since he got the standing ovation and whatnot. I, I I look at here's the one thing that stands out to me. You have Bryson Stott playing very very well. You have oh, yeah. on, on fire. You have Bryce Harper. I think still recovering from the UCL injury in his elbow, and that's why you see the seven home runs. However, OPS still pretty high, and that oh, yeah. base percentage is at three seventy eight, the highest on the team right now. So he's getting on base. And the few games that I saw, he's hitting the ball hard. He's just not getting it over the fence. But I think that's going to come with maybe another four to eight months of healing, which if they've yeah. ever had an injury that is not like acute, but it's something that's lingering over the, under the surface, you don't necessarily feel it all the time, but you don't have the full range of motion. You don't have the the maximum power that you used to have it, even if you <laughs> You don't realize it until, boom, you don't have the same distance off the bat. I think that just takes time. I don't necessarily see that as him regressing as a player. Um, We'll we'll be able to see that fully where he's at, I think, in another eight months from now when we see him doing off-season workouts and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I mean, we're we're going down this stretch, and you, you talk about the Phillies and where they're at. They're hitting well. You've got Lorenzen. You shored up that pitching rotation a little bit and you're looking at August right and you have all these games coming up you have a series coming up with Washington which is important like are they great no but you need to wipe their asses out and yeah. then you, have, you look at September you have Miami Atlanta Atlanta Mets Mets September that's that's make or break right yeah that's, that's pretty much what it is because the Mets, they are eight and a half games back of you. But if you lose two series to them, especially if they're playing well through August, that can easily yeah. – right? So you have to get a little hotter and stay hot. So, you know, we'll, we'll come back and talk about these guys. But at least they've started to pick up the hit and then turn it around. And Trey Turner has been, you know, getting out of his own head a little bit. Yeah, so probably mental. Start. Yeah, so let us know what you guys think about the Phillies, where they're at now, where you think you'll be at come September time when we're closing down the playoff race. Do you think they'll be there? Do you think they'll catch up to the Braves? Do you think they'll get the first, second, or third spot? You know, let us know in the comments. And with that said, we're going to wrap this thing up. And I'm going to be right back at you guys real soon with some boxing because we had a big fight with Anthony Joshua this weekend in the buildup to get ready for him fighting Deontay Wilder. And then we had the big press conference today between Canelo Alvarez and Jamel Charlo for their big fight on September 30th. That's for Undisputed at 168. So I'm going to be dropping videos on that. So make sure y'all guys tune in for that shit. And um, that's it, man. Um, yeah, Thanks for your time. My co-host, Ryan. Appreciate y'all. And, of course, uh, man. We're going to catch y'all on the next one, man. Peace.